Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rob from Instinct Bassin. Thanks for tuning in to another video. In this one, we're gonna uh, go out to the lake and um, just turn on the fish finder. And I'm gonna just kind of go over the things that I do, you know, when I first get to a lake, whether I know the lake or not, um, and then just go over some features that I use while I'm fishing. Um, so I thought it'd be a little bit different style. The last few videos have been in my garage. Um, I sent out a uh, survey a, a while back and said, hey, what kind of video do you want to see? And this kind of on the lake demonstration kind of video received the most votes, probably 80% of them. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I may fish a little bit as well, so hopefully we'll get to see a few fish catches in there as well. But the main thing I'm going to do is just kind of show you what I do as soon as I get to the lake and then how I go about finding some offshore spots and that kind of stuff. I am in Florida, so this is a shallow kind of a bowl lake, which a lot of lakes are in Florida. So there's not going to be a whole lot of underwater features and stuff that you would have maybe on the lake where you're at. But um, I still think the information will be the same and hopefully it'll still be useful to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the water. Right, guys so so I figured the first thing I would do was so I just put in and um, I'm just sitting here at the boat ramp I got the power pole down I just wanted to get out of the way so I could uh, let other people launch and stuff but the first thing I usually do and at least when I'm at a new body of water is I'll put a waypoint by the ramp here and you can do that just by hitting this mark button or you can hit you know hit the screen and then do it that way as well but marking the ramp is always a good idea just to uh, make sure you can get back to where you're going um, so i definitely recommend doing that especially if it's at a lake you've never been to so that's probably the first thing i do and um, next we're just going to go over kind of the setup that i have i know some people have been asking me that so i thought i would just go over that and uh, hopefully that'll help some people out as well all right, so the setup I have is I have the 93SV, um, it's an Echomap UHD here at the console. And then at the bow, I've got the 73. And forgive me, I'm just holding my phone here. So that's a 73 right there. Um, I've got them networked together. Um, hopefully I don't drop my phone in the water. But this is kind of the setup I did here. This is just what's called a clamshell. I drilled a hole down through there using a hole saw, covered it up with the clamshell, ran the wires down it. This is the network cable that you need right here. It's hooked up to the pan optics side. This is your transducer wire and then that's your power. Um, I'll leave a link down below for this cable right here because I know some other people have been looking for it. And um, do me a favor and use that link to buy it if you're going to because I'll get a little bit of commission out of it and it'll help the channel. Um, I've got that just running down through here. And then, it just kind of comes up underneath my rod locker here and then I ran it all the way up through here underneath there and then out that hole right there back into the unit into the 73 definitely recommend networking them together if you if you have two of them it's not that hard and only takes one wire um, I will say if you have pan optics you're going to need a network box because then you're going to be taking up that pan optic slot so just keep that in mind as well. I'll leave a link to that as well, just in case you want to check that out. All right. So that's my setup for now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to upgrade that in the future, but um, I've had that for about a year and it's working out pretty well. All right. So one of the other first things that I like to do is just uh, make sure everything's working. So I'm going to kind of go through that right now. Um, these are what are called overlays. I went through that in, a, um, in another video as well. Um, so I'll just go through these, hit the chart fishing chart and that's obviously working now i do have the depth shading turned on i went over how to set that up in another video as well um, i'll go through it here in a little bit on how to how to make it work as well um, also i did get a couple of comments saying that on the 94 sv um, they weren't able to get depth shading to work on lakes so i don't know if that's just a feature of the 93 so because the 93 is for lakes and the 94 is for coastal regions um, i believe the 95 is for canada if i'm not mistaken 
So just keep that in mind when you're looking for these units and make sure you buy the right one. Um, if you're gonna use fresh water the majority of the time, I would definitely get the 93 SV. Um, you can still use coastal charts on it. You'll just have to buy the charts and stick them into here. Uh, and vice versa, if you have the 94, you'll have to get the freshwater charts and put those in here. So it, it pays to get the, the unit that you're gonna use most of the time. I never go in salt water with, with my bass, excuse me, with my bass boat. So that's why I have the 93 SV. Uh, I apologize if it gets kind of windy. Hopefully we'll keep that to a minimum as well. Um, I'll go through here and make sure everything else is working. Here's your sonar screens. This is the traditional sonar. As you can see, I'm just in 3.7 feet of water. Um, and again, this lake doesn't have a lot of features. That, you know, as you can see, the bottom is mostly flat. Here is the clear view, or what some other units will call down scan. And then here is our side view or side scan that some of the other ones will call. This will take a minute to, to show. All right, and so that's your side scan or your side view, I should say, for Garmin. All right, I went through um, a, a video on how to control the gain and brightness on these units, but I'll touch on it again real quick. And that's just menu um, brightness. I don't like it to be on auto, so I will go here and kind of turn that all the way up almost, probably to about I like it at about 95, not quite all the way up. This is the same thing as gain on other units. Uh, the UHD units call it brightness, whereas the non-UHD units will call it gain. All right. And then the contrast, I've got that set about where I like it, which is about 75. Play with that on yours, because it may be different depending on what kind of picture you want to get. All right, so next I'm gonna show you how to plan a quick route. Um, this lake doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in it, so but it'll still apply. But the way to do that is just to, you can zoom out like that to show more of the lake. And what I'm gonna do is just plan a route over here to the dam or to the spillway area, I should say. And I'm gonna do that by hitting a mark right there. And I'm gonna hit navigate to, and then I'm gonna hit route to and then add turns in here just like that i've shown this on another video so feel free to skip ahead if you already know how to do this obviously this small of a lake you can just go right to it but i figure for demonstration purposes this will get it knocked out all right and then i'm going to hit navigate route all right and now i'm just going to follow this purple line until i get to where i'm going all right so let's get started all right, hopefully you can still hear me over the engine. Um, I talked about in one of my other setup videos, I think it was the five more things to do on how to control the screen. See how this one's turning back and forth? You can change that by going into the screen and choosing either course up or head up or north up. And um, you know, I, I like to have it where it switches around on me here on this version because that way I'm always facing up and I don't have to figure out which way I'm turning on the lake. So to show you how to do that real quick, you just go to menu, uh, chart setup, and then map orientation. And you can see I've got that in the head up. If I had it in north up, then the boat would be moving at different directions across the map. And that gets confusing to me a little bit anyway. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're working this. All right, so now I'm just gonna follow that purple line to go to where I wanna go. And um, I'll see you when I get there. So as you get to, it actually just went off the screen, but you'll get a notice comes up that says 
you know you're reaching your destination and you can hit end or or um, or or back so I've tried to get that but it came off but anyway we're getting close to it and um, we'll probably stop and do a little bit of fish and see if we can't catch anything um, but that's basically how you navigate to a spot using that plan route what I'll do now is just go to menu and hit stop navigation you could save the route right here if you wanted to I'm not gonna save it just because I just you know barely went anywhere so I'm just gonna say no and now I'm back to that main main map screen you can zoom in by pressing these plus and minus buttons or by doing it like you do your phone like that either way I kind of prefer the plus and minus just because I have a little more control over it I feel and then another user commented on kind of go over what these mean um, these are basically like let me shut the motor off these are basically like your old school radio dials so if you push one it, it'll hold down that and it'll save that as a shortcut so these are your shortcut keys all right I think I've got number two save to a combo screen like that and I had another user say that he wasn't able to move ahead while he was graphing and using the map because when you touch on one side or the other it's gonna make it big like that I can see how that could be frustrating um, really and kind of what I said to the user was I don't really look ahead like that while I'm graphing so it's just not something that I've really run into as a problem but I could see how it would be frustrating I think Garmin considers it a feature how you can just touch one side and then um, go back you know go to that main screen like if I wanted to just do that I would touch that side um, but I could also see how that would be frustrating as well um, unfortunately I don't think there's a way to disable that um, if there is be sure and leave a comment down below so we can all learn from each other but um, yeah so back to these buttons here I've got that number two saved as that combo I think number three is gonna be my clear view and then number four is gonna be my side view while we're here I'll kind of go over some of the features of the side view um, as I explained in another video your boat is actually up here in this top corner that's where your transducer is this line is your transducer line the black space right there is the depth of the water see it's 3.8 feet if we were say in 20 feet of water this would obviously be higher um, if you look over here you can see we're out in a, in a pad field a few sparse lily pads you can see these beds right here that's kind of a cool feature see those beds those are probably tilapia beds I don't think they're bass beds um, but these are all pad stems right here or shell anything um, like as you can see if this is a bright return it's gonna be a hard bottom if it's a dimmer return it's gonna be a soft bottom but I wanted to just kind of point out some stuff that you see on side view or side scan um, and these beds were one thing I think that little white thing right there is probably a fish on that bed so that's a pretty pretty cool picture there um, like I said those are probably tilapia I don't think they're bass this time of year here in Florida we're pretty much spawned out already here in um, mid April so all right so I thought I'd go over real quick the benefits of networking your fish finders together just for those of you who may have two of these and um, are considering networking them together but don't have them yet and uh, I just thought I'd go over you know what you might some reasons why you might want to do that because I do highly recommend it if you can um, so let's just imagine that we're going down here on our side scan or our side view forgive me um, and we see something that we want to fish let's just say we want to fish that right there well, what I can do is hit pause here and then I can just go right to where that is right there and I can create a waypoint just like this all right and now I've got a waypoint created and now if I go to that home page and I go back to my chart that waypoint is right there but what the benefit of it is let me stop the boat and I'll go up to the front real quick so the benefit of it is it just created it here on the front to me for me as well so now I can get on the trolling motor and go back and fish that spot and I can split the screen using nav on one spot and clear view on the other or side view whichever you prefer um, but I like to have nav on one side that way I can know where I am in relation to the spot all right so that's why you would want to network these two together or just one of the reasons I should say 
So I thought I'd go over some of the color schemes that this unit comes with, um, just in case you haven't got it yet and you were wondering what kind of color it comes with and you just kind of wanted to see that. Um, there's some cool rocks and stuff right there. Um, so to do that, I'm just gonna go to menu. Sonar setup and then color scheme. And the one I use most of the time is this amber color. You can kind of go through them and see the, the uh, changes that it makes. Some of these may be more useful, like this black emerald is probably pretty useful when it's bright sunlight out like it is kind of right now. But that's normally why you'd want to change them just in case, you know, one may be more visible in bright sunlight than the other. And so just play around with them till you see which one you like. I think this is the default one, that rusted steel. But it does come with a lot of different color options for whichever situation you might find yourself in. And now we're back to that amber like that, that I like. All right, so those are just the color options you got. Um, I'm gonna motor out to another spot and see if we can't get on some fish. All right, so another useful feature of this unit, and I hope the engine noise isn't too bad, is um, the ability to record your own depth, depth readings. Uh, quick draw is what they call it, the quick draw function. So in order to use that, you're gonna to have to have a memory card in here. It's gotta be less than 32 gigabytes. Um, so make sure it's the right size, otherwise it won't read it. Um, but let me go ahead and show you how to do that in case you wanted to make up, you know, you're in your lake that wasn't on here or didn't have its own depth readings or you wanted closer ones. Um, we're gonna to go to menu, quick draw contours, and then just hit start recording. All right, now you can go back and you'll see that little green dot right there. That shows that it's recording your own contours. I'll zoom in just a little bit. So as you can see, there's no really contour lines out here. So this is gonna start putting those in for me. There's one, you see one just came up four feet. Another one there. So this is just a good way if you want to get some contour lines in an area where there aren't any, or if you want to um, you know, do a lake, like I said, that, that doesn't already have contour lines on it, this is a good way to do it using that quick draw function. Again, just make sure you got the proper size memory card in here. And again, that was just menu, quick draw contours. And now I'm just gonna go to stop recording. All right, so I went over this in another video as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through it while I'm here, and that's to uh, edit these overlays. All you gotta do is just push hold on them, and now you can change it to whatever you like. I had that one on time of the day, so that's what I like it on, um, but to do that, that would've just been system and then time of day. Down here is water temperature, depth, and then GPS speed. All right, one other useful one I think um, you may want to replace one of these with is your distance to your waypoint. Um, that can come in handy sometimes when you're up on the front fishing because Garmin, for some reason, whatever, whatever reason they do, they don't have what's called casting rings, which is one thing that I do like about Humminbird that Garmin doesn't have. Um, what casting rings are is it just shows you your distance, you know, it'll put a casting ring around a waypoint and show you when you're within a certain distance to that waypoint. Um, so putting that up here as one of these options would be the way to kind of get around not having casting rings. Alright, so now I want to show you how to keep the backlight 
on day or how to change it to night. Uh, I'm just going to go to this home screen and hit the power button once. And then see where it says backlight 100% and then color mode day. I keep mine in day all the time. I just don't like it changing around. You can set it to auto or you can obviously set it to day or night. If I set it to night, that's going to change it to that night mode. And then again, I just like it. I keep it in day all the time. But that's how you do that. All right, so this is just another uh, cool function if you have two of them networked together like I do here. Um, you can actually tell the front one to read off the back one um, and vice versa. Um, or you can tell it to read off of its own or whichever you like. Where that comes into use or I, where I find that useful anyway is when I want to use side view on the trolling motor. Because if you're trying to use side view on the trolling motor and the trolling motor is going back and forth like that, you're going to get a wiggly line. So I have the side view set up to where the front one will read off the back. Now I have a 20 foot difference obviously because I have a 20 foot boat, but that at least gives me a clear picture and that side view isn't moving around. So to set that up, you're just going to go into settings and then communications and then preferred sources. And that'll tell you see which one's using off of what. So water temp, then traditional, um, and whatnot. And there, there he goes, that side view. That's showing you that this one is actually using the 93 that I have on the console to uh, look at side view. All right. So that's just another reason to network these two together that, um, you know, that I find useful. All right. So this part, I'm just going to go over real quick how to create waypoints. Um, just for those that may not be aware, there's a few different ways to do it. You can always create a waypoint by hitting this mark button and I'll do that now. Um, when that comes up, you don't want to hit this man overboard because that's going to only allow you to do one. All right. So see, it just marked it there. So that's all you want to do is hit mark and then don't do anything. And it'll put that waypoint there. If you start messing around with it like this, so you just put another mark. Now you can edit it here like that. You can change the symbol to it. You can name it whatever you like. It'll tell you what the depth is, what the water temperature is. You can go to your position. You can enter in coordinates, all kinds of stuff like that. That's already going to be there. And you can even put comments in it. Again, don't hit the man overboard because that's going to only allow you to do one of those. And anytime you do it, it's going to automatically override the other one. All right. So going back to the home screen, that's how you do them from the charts. You can also... You know, do it like this. Say I want to put one on that island. Just do that and then create waypoint there. And so now I've created a waypoint right there at that island. And then going into your sonar charts, let's just go into clear view. And let's say I wanted to fish this hump. I'm going to hit pause on the sonar. And then I'm going to put it cursor wherever I like say on that little cursor right there or on that hump and then I'm going to touch that and now that's created a waypoint right at that spot and again I can edit it I can uh, change the the symbol you know to anything I like you know whatever it might be you know I can there that's kind of like an island anyway um, and now that'll be there right where I put that spot I go back into my chart and I zoom in, it's going to be basically right underneath my boat. So see, it's right there. And again, now if I wanted to, I could go up to the front since I have them networked together and go right to that spot and fish that spot. You can do the same thing from the side view. Say I wanted to fish this little area right here. I'd hit pause put the marker on there and then hit new waypoint. All right. I'm not going to do it now because I don't really want a waypoint there, but you get the idea, kind of the same exact thing. And then to, to unpause it, just hit play. Okay. So this was kind of my way of getting around the um, Garmin not having casting rings. As you can see over here, I put a waypoint and then I've changed my overlay to give me the distance to my destination. 
And you can also use this as a guide too. You know, that's 50 feet. Put that there. I'm about 100 feet away. Um, so if I go back to my map screen, and there it goes, 93.8 feet away. That's a little over a cast length away, but um, you know that's just one way you could get around not having casting rings is to put that distance to destination there, create a waypoint where you want to fish, um, and then hit go to to make it act like you're um, navigating to that waypoint. You may need to turn off the arrival alarm so it doesn't keep going off while you're trying to fish, but this will just tell you how far away you are and in what direction um, from the boat you know that you're um, that you're fishing at. So that's just one way to get around Garmin not having those casting rings. And if anybody from Garmin is listening, I have no idea why you don't have casting rings. That's been around for like 10 years. So if there was one feature that I would love for this unit to have that it doesn't have already is casting rings. All right, if anybody's listening, put it in there. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. Trust your gut and I'll see you on the water.